final speaker is Representative Ibrahim Ayash. Ibrahim is currently serving his first term in the Michigan House of Representatives and is the second Muslim to ever represent Detroit in state government. Please welcome Representative Ibrahim Ayash to the stage.
to impress the department head to get that promotion. Your first and most primary mission in this dunya is to invest in getting that promotion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the end, that is the only thing that will matter for all of us. So I know I'm, I'm talking about this, Ibrahim, you know, you're telling us we got to invest in our faith and have a good diet and get soul food. But it's not easy. You know, you're, you're telling us, okay, just don't go out. But sometimes we'll, we'll get judged, right? But I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you guys work with vegans by a show of hands? How many of you guys are vegans by a show of hands? Okay. So, when you guys go out for staff dinners or order lunch into the office, do you tell the vegan, well, too bad, you gotta eat the chicken. Or, you can't have cheese, that's all we got. Chips and queso, take it or leave it. No, we respect people's diets. Right? We tell folks, if you're a vegetarian, we'll find vegetarian options. If you're a biha, we'll find you the biha. If you're kosher, we'll find you kosher. So why is it when we want to set standards for our soul food, somehow it's a big deal? Oh, they're going to judge me. And maybe they will. Sometimes I judge vegans. That's all right. But you have to put your priorities in place. Because if you don't invest in your diet right now, we're all going to be hungry on Yom Kippur. We're going to be starving and yearning that maybe if we invest in a little bit into that soul food, that maybe if we put in a little bit of work and recognize that sometimes we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which most of us do. That's why you're all in this room. But how many of us trust and have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? See, believing God exists is one thing. Believing in God's plan is, is another thing. And sometimes it's a recognition, to be quite frank, we're going to have a little honesty here. We prefer our own plans in our lives than the plan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us. So take a moment and ask yourself, how often do we do that? How often are we focusing on our principal, immediate goals of success so that we can go back and say, I'm the director of this position or I'm an elected official. You know, I always joke, uh, my title is the Honorable Ibrahim Ayash. So I'm going to use that for the rest of my life. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Inshallah, I can be honorable under the eyes of Allah SWT. So, in conclusion, I, I want us to remember that we have a responsibility to enhance our diet for soul food. So how do we do that? Number one, Find someone in your workspace, in your university, in your community, if you don't live with Muslims. Because Islam is inherently a communal faith. Find somebody to latch on to. You know, the closest friend I have in the Michigan house is a 50 plus year old black minister from Detroit. She's a black, she's a devout Christian woman. And her and I bond so well because most of our lifestyles are in alignment. We don't go out and drink. We don't like to engage in some of those activities. So alhamdulillah, I was blessed to find somebody that I can relate to. Even though she's a 50 plus year old black woman. But there's that connection and that we respect the divine, albeit in different ways. Number two, find a source for soul food. That means that you gotta find a religious mentor, find a community, and make a plan to enhance your Islam time and time again. If the only time you eat soul food is at mass time, then I need you to make a plan today that before I go home from Chicago, I will set a plan to start finding a consistent source for my diet of soul food. Because that is the only way that you can do the work of protecting your event, protecting your diet for the afternoon. Finally, I, I just want to close with a, with a quick story. You know, this is not something that we struggle with alone. Even our prophets recognize the dangers of being enticed. Yusuf Salam, when he was being seduced and was locked in a room, was told, come do some inappropriate things. What did he say? Yusuf Salam recognized that he needed refuge from Allah 
And he recognized that without the refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that maybe he would have fell into the trap. This is a prophet. This is someone with a divine, direct connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even they recognize the value of that. So finally, brothers and sisters, I just want you guys to make sure that you make space and energy to find that source for soul food. Because it is the most important thing to remember. That what's bad for the soul now will end up paying for later. And remember, ihsan and acceptance from Allah